So let me start out with a thin film interference because that's uh, I think the one that where I could give you a lot of calculation questions where because we haven't quite covered the um, important concepts, <laughs> I can, couldn't give you problems yet. So as we are going through these topics, I want you to keep one thing in mind is what we have been covering since day one of when we are doing physical optics. So for interference, conditions for constructive interference you need the f so you are whenever you are looking at interference you are looking at phase difference that's why it's important that two light sources are coherent so you are looking at phase difference for constructive interference of multiple um, integer multiples of 2 pi. So 2 pi n, where n goes from, oops, goes from 0, 1, 2, and so on. And for destructive interference, you are looking for an odd multiple of pi. So your phase difference goes from um, how should I write this? Um, 2n plus 1 pi, where n goes from 0, 1, 2, 3. Good. This sounds familiar. I, I, I mean, I hope, I, I think everyone remembers this. The reason I'm bringing it up again and having it written here is as we analyze these situations, um, it, so some people have this approach. You want to memorize formulas. So for double slit, you want you to memorize some formulas. For single slit diffraction, you want you to memorize some formulas. And I'm telling you that it's going to be so much easier if you focus on the phase difference. And everything you do for all these different arrangements is just uh, trying to figure out what the phase difference is and use that to figure out is it constructive or destructive interference. So this will be especially true for thin film interference because there isn't really a single formula I can give because um, uh, as you change some situations, it'll, it'll change the conditions and whatever, fo the form if I'm trying to give you a formula, whatever formula I give you will just branch out into multiple <laughs> different ones and it'll be so much, so easy to get confused. <laughs> so I want you to focus on this. Our goal is to figure out the phase difference. And for a given situation, we are simply going to try to analyze it to see, um, so analyze to see if we are trying to get destructive interference, then what do we need to get this phase difference? So let me um, cover this with some examples. So all of this is covered under what's called the thin film interference. And if you want a diagram, well, maybe you don't. I, I want a diagram. Uh, there is a good diagram of thin film interference in your textbook, you know, 3.4. And this is the picture I want you to have in mind. And let me actually simplify some things in this picture so that you don't have to worry about some things unnecessarily. For the kind of situations we are going to look at, we are always going to say this. We are always going to say that these angles, whatever they are, we are going to say they are very close to normal, so these angles are more or less approximately zero. Maybe it's, that's not always the case. We are just going to make that approximation to make our calculations easier. So you won't have to worry about the geometry, all the refraction stuff. Yeah? So, so that's one simplification. Um, and I guess that's it. And um, so what you are, when you are looking at thin film interference, what you are seeing is you are seeing two beams. One beam is that one that reflects off of one reflective surface and comes to you. Um, that's a, this is the beam one. And the second beam, it comes along the same path, but you are considering one that refracted through the first uh, reflective surface, uh, but, and then it reflects off the second reflective surface. 
And we are assuming that by the time you look at it, these two are close enough in space that they overlap and they're going to interfere with each other. And so when you look at these two beams, um, where, does the, where does the phase difference occur? So this is the key question. Where does the phase difference, delta phi, occur? Does it come, do, is there any difference in phase before either of these two beams uh, st uh, interact, start interacting with this first layer? No, right, it's common for both of them. So, um, so on this reflection is one place where you might get some phase difference. So you might have something happening here, one beam reflect, or not, second beam reflect. And, um, and there's a phase difference going on um, within this layer, right? So the first beam never went into this layer, the second beam went through the layer and then comes out here. So there's whatever happens in between here that's going to lead to some phase difference, potentially including this reflection here. Okay, let me finish tracing the steps to the end. What about after this second beam comes out here? So from this point to the end, any phase difference? No, uh, they are going through essentially the same path. This is where it's uh, useful to assume that the <laughs> angle is zero. Then you can say, you know, these are just parallel rays, no path length difference between them. So with this thin film interference, you are going to focus on what's happening with this layer. What happens on reflections and what happens as the beams pass through. So let me, um, let me work out three examples. Let me write down the names of three examples so that I don't forget. Um, I want to do, um, let's see. Yeah, yeah, um, three examples. These are sort of typical, um, uh, typical physical situations where you see this happening. So the first would be, um, uh, Thin film of oil on water. Have you seen like, you know, on a rainy day, which I guess, did it rain yesterday? I thought it rained recently. Yeah, it's a little bit, yeah, yeah. So on a rainy day, you sometimes see this on the road. Uh, when a car has, where there's a little drop of oil, you see rainbow colors um, on that oil, right? And that's a result of interference that's going on with a thin film, thin film of oil on top of water. So we'll analyze a situation like that. And the other one is, um, I guess, um, um, thin, air gap between glass plates. Um, glass, let me call it glass slide. And finally, the last one is Newton's rings. Um, let me actually number this. So examples one, two, and three. And actually, let me pass out the demo for uh, example two, it's uh, this uh, diffraction grading that you have seen in lab. But what I want you to look at uh, as I pass this around is I don't want you to look at it as uh, diffraction grading. I want you to look at the kind of gap between the gla protective glass cover and the thing behind it. So take one and pass the other. Ignore the fingerprints because some people are, I uh, guess one per table, please. Um, so. Oh, let's see, one per table, please. So what I want you to take a look at here is, as you look at this, if you look at it from some angle, um, trying to reflect let, uh, the ceiling light here, then you will see some pattern, sometimes rings, a uh, little bit of rainbow colors or pattern. So that's a result of interference. You are, uh, depending on the exact thickness between the glass plate, you are either getting destructive interference for certain colors that, so if you get destructive interference for blue, it will do maybe appear a bit reddish. You know, um, so that's where those rainbow colors are coming from. 
So uh, let's uh, just uh, analyze these examples, and I will introduce some new rules that you have to know as we are going through this example. And um, these rules will relate to how we handle each one of these points as, um, as, um, uh, as the interaction happens. Let me number them. A, B, and C. Yeah, I guess that's good enough. 